the Miami Dolphins were busy making roster moves Tuesday, including one that previously had been reported. But the signing of veteran defensive tackle Andrew Billings to the practice squad, which was reported Monday, might have been the least noteworthy of the moves. The other moves Tuesday saw the Dolphins wave safety Sheldrick Redwine, place tackle Greg Little on injured reserve and released veteran defensive end Jabal Sherd from the practice squad. Maybe the most significant move involved Little, who has yet to appear on the Dolphins' injury report this season, which would suggest he was injured in practice Monday. Little has been a mystery for the Dolphins because he has yet to be active for any game in 2021 despite the fact the Dolphins acquired the former Carolina Panthers' second-round pick in a trade for a late-round draft pick in August. Little landing on injured reserve leaves the Dolphins with eight offensive linemen on the active roster, Jesse Davis, Robert Hunt, Austin Ryder, Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, Cameron Tom, Robert Jones and Solomon Kindley. Redwine's stay in Miami proved to be both highly disappointing and short for the former University of Miami player. He was signed off the Carolina practice squad ahead of the game at Buffalo but was left home that weekend along with wide receiver Preston Williams because of disciplinary reasons. Redwine then was inactive for the past two games. Sherd appeared in one game after being elevated from the practice squad but wasn't much of a factor in that game at Tampa Bay, finishing with one assisted tackle in 13 defensive snaps. His spot on the practice squad will be taken by Billings, whose addition we discussed Monday. With Redwine and Little off the active roster, the Dolphins now have two openings. With Little, the Dolphins now have six players on the in-season injured reserve list, along with Malcolm Brown, Michael Deiter, Will Fuller v. Greg Mance and wide receiver Devontae Parker. Brown, Deiter and Fuller are eligible to return, but head coach Brian Flores said Monday he didn't anticipate any of the three to practice this week. Prediction, the Miami Dolphins will be 7-7 by Christmas. I'm tempted to hedge my bet here, but this is a no-hedge zone. No, this is a bold prediction, so let's be bold. After a terrible start to the season, the Miami Dolphins will be 7-7 by Christmas morning. Coming off of an unexpected win against the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday night, the Dolphins are sitting at 3-7 around the midpoint, sidebar. The worst consequence of a 17-game season is that there isn't a true midpoint of the season anymore, of the season. So is it absolutely ridiculous to think that this team could pull off a 5-0 stretch after going 2-7? Probably, but we're going there anyway. The defense balled out against the Ravens. This year's rookie class is looking pretty amazing. Jalen Waddell is on pace to break the rookie receptions record on a terrible offense. Jalen Phillips is ranked second among rookie edge rushers even though he hasn't even seen the field that much. Javon Holland should be in the DROI discussion with how well he is playing. Tua Tungavailoa is starting this week against the Jets who are a mess. Even more of a mess than the usual Jets mess. Whether it's Mike, first overall pick, White who threw four interceptions this week or Zach Wilson coming off an injury, the defense has a real shot at building some more momentum this week. In week 14 the Dolphins have the Panthers and Cam Newton, who two weeks ago was sitting on the couch watching football and is now presumed to be their starter. I'm not sure why the general consensus among the talking heads seems to be that Cam is going to be 2015 MVP Cam, but I don't see him just slotting into this Panthers offense as the starter without any issues. This one isn't an easy matchup, but it's definitely a winnable matchup. Next up is Danny Dimes and the New York football giants who currently sit at the bottom of their division at 3-6. They've been decimated by injuries and bad quarterback play all season. Another very winnable game. And then on December 19, the Finns have the Jets again. Those divisional matchups are always a bit of a toss-up and you can usually throw the records out, but in the spirit of positivity, that's another very winnable game for Miami. So if the Dolphins can win all four of those very winnable matchups, they'd be sitting at 7-7 on Christmas morning and a lost season would feel not quite as depressing. Will it happen? Who knows?